There's new research out of Yale University that studied the reports of people who suffered from chronic debilitating symptoms after getting a COVID vaccine. Is there a new post-COVID vaccine syndrome? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Um, as always, I try to give you information on research on different sides of a particular argument. Obviously, COVID vaccines have been one of the most hotly debated, very personal for a lot of people. And so I wanted to present this new information, especially since this came from Yale University, of course, an Ivy League institution. And this is really one of the first large um, studies that has looked in the United States from a university level at the potential of a of particular symptoms that people got after getting the COVID vaccine. Now, I do want to put a shout out to Dr. John Campbell, who first reported on this, um, at least to my ears, but uh, pointed us to the study. So I'm going to report on what I have read. OK, now a couple of things that's really important. OK, this is information from a preprint study. OK, it has not been peer reviewed. That is really important. Now, granted, when an institutional review board for ethics has been um, passed by a place like like Yale University, okay, that obviously leads a lot of strength to it. But until it's gone through the whole peer review process, it needs to be clear that this does need to be taken with a grain of salt, okay? Now, in addition to that, um, I would encourage you to read the paper itself. It's pretty easy to go through. If you look in the show description down below here, you will see a link directly to that paper. So you can read it and you can draw your own conclusions. OK, now, but I do want to point out that the name of this paper is called Post-Vaccination Syndrome, a Descriptive Analysis of Reported Symptoms and Patient Experience After COVID-19 Immunization. OK, now. The authors of this paper actually start off by saying a chronic post-vaccination syndrome, which they call PVS, after COVID-19 vaccination has been reported, but has yet to be well characterized. OK, and that's what they set out to do. Is there something that they can characterize that they can actually say these are particular symptoms that are being reported, that are being seen? OK, now the study itself is called the LISTEN study, the LISTEN to Immune symptoms and treatment experiences now or listen and it studied patients from may 2022 to july 2023 so these are people more recent in since the vaccines which of course came out in the uh, winter into spring of 2021 OK, now this research group also um, has been collecting data about long COVID, but that was not part of this particular study. So I don't have any information on that right now. So this is specifically related to symptoms that are debilitating long term following a COVID vaccine. OK, so we're not talking about people with pain in their arms who maybe developed fever or rash for a few days. These are people suffering long term debilitating conditions. OK, now this was also self-reporting. And that is, of course, important. Because that's a, you know, when a person reports as opposed to what's observed real time, that is difference. And so that also means that it's not as strong of a study as there may eventually be. But this is the data as we have it. And it is a pretty large number of, of subjects. Now, um, I do want to also acknowledge the first thing. And I really appreciate that they called this the listen study. They, they made the letters match that because this is a study where they're actually encouraging people to listen to people who have had vaccine reactions, as well as for long COVID. But again, that's not what I'm reporting about today. Um, now, I also do want to point that the things that I'm going to be reporting on here are things that I have clinically had patients relate to me that they, or sometimes their family members, have suffered themselves. Okay. Now, in terms of the details of the study, the authors were um, were uh, concluded that individuals who reported having this COVID um, post-vaccine syndrome after COVID vaccination, that these people specifically had low health status, high symptom burden, high psycho, um, psychological stress despite going through many different types of treatments, and declared that there needs to be a continued investigation to understand and treat this condition. And of course, that's really important. And of course, if you're sick for a long time, that's going to have psychological burden on you, especially if you've been through treatments that you may have been hopeful for, you may not be so hopeful af um, ho afterwards. So they specifically reported on 241 adults, okay? 55% of them had the Pfizer 37% of them had Moderna. The other 8% were not reported, okay? But still 92% were specific to these messenger RNA vaccines. 
The side effects were noted um, by day eight in all people with an average of three days. So this wasn't, you know, I've also had patients who have said, and I've heard people say, oh, two months later, they started with these symptoms. It was from the COVID vaccine. And not to say it can't be, but there's a lot of other things that could cause things. But when you see a specific reaction start within a few days of a medicine, of a vaccine, of a virus, then that correlates much more strongly to that being the root cause of the trigger, right? Okay, now, the five most common symptoms that were reported, exercise intolerance, 71%, excessive fatigue, 69%, numbness, like physical numbness, 63%, brain fog, also 63%, and neuropathy, 63%. So these are very common in a strong majority of these individuals, okay? Now, they also have ongoing mental health issues. And the patients were actually asked, so besides saying that these are the symptoms that you've had, that you had to start off and what you had chronically, they also asked the individuals, tell me how you've been feeling this past week, before, you know, prior to filling out the specific survey, Okay. And they reported, 93% of them reported uneasiness, 82% fatigue, fearfulness, overwhelming um, worries, 81%, helplessness, 80%, anxiety, 76%, hopelessness, 72%, depression, 76%, feeling of worthlessness, 49%. At least once these were reported. And again, that doesn't mean that they themselves um, are a cause of the from the vaccine but these are people how people are feeling the mental health impact because of what they've experienced and continue to experience with those other symptoms okay now i do want to point out that there are some limitations to this study in particular as i said this was relative to self-reporting okay and you know a, 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 the, the best most optimal type of study would be a group of people who were oh, multiple groups, groups of people who didn't get vaccinated and went on to have those types of symptoms. People who were vaccinated who didn't have those types of symptoms. People who had COVID who did have those types of symptoms. And people who had the vaccine and had those types of symptoms. And then studying them from, the, from when they first get started or when they're exposed to those things. And then following them throughout time. OK, and hopefully there will be those types of studies that will be done. But this is the data that is provided for us. This is easier types of data um, to collect because it's just a simple reporting. But of course, it doesn't mean that a doctor um, examined them or saw them right away. They're saying, I started having these symptoms on after these days. And of course, you know, sometimes people can have faulty memories. Maybe they didn't realize that they had those symptoms before, but they heard about the vaccine causing these problems and maybe they attributed to it. So again, I'm not saying that that is what happened. I am saying that that's a possibility. And that's why this particular research is not the optimal way of doing things. So, but now, you know, assuming that this paper, first of all, goes through the peer review process. And therefore, other independent researchers conclude, yes, this is a valid study, okay? This is compelling evidence that there is a post-COVID vaccine syndrome, okay? And of course, people will say, well, duh, I have this. And I'm not denying that. But the true scientific process for us to go through to understand what's happening, to maybe be able to recognize problems, is this specific to spike protein being made? Because again, long COVID can cause this too. Is this specific to messenger RNAs as a whole? You know, we're probably going to see other messenger RNAs that are coming out. Maybe this will be something that people will look at sooner when there's other emergency authorizations that are going to come out with not enough research. Perhaps they'll know to look at this type of thing from the very beginning. But, you know, for people who have suffered from long COVID, for people who have suffered from severe vaccine injuries, you know, my hearts go out to everybody. And hopefully that this is science that we can build on to make things better in the future. Have a nice day.